Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is J.T. Jameson. And in case you haven't been aware, allow me to enlighten you on one thing. Spider-Man is a menace! But he is pretty cool, so that's why I've been trying to build his web shooters in real life. Actually, far from being a disgruntled news mogul, I'm just regular JT, not JT Jameson. And chances are, if you're watching this video, you've probably come from the Hacksmith Spider-Man video that I helped make during a recent work trip to Canada to work for Hacksmith Industries. And really, it was an incredible opportunity. I loved it heaps, and it really felt like Peter Parker's Stark internship. The only difference being that James the Hacksmith is a lot nicer than Tony Stark. And actually, everyone at Hacksmith Industries was really nice. Just really solid, down-to-earth people. <laughs> Including me, apparently, in the most literal sense. Uh, but fun fact about that clip is that there's been no sound effects added to it, so what you hear is exactly what it sounded like in real life, and I can tell you it pretty much felt like that too. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk web shooters. So my initial thinking was to make a web shooter like Ben Riley's, which is a wrist-mounted turret with web cartridges all the way around. But I ended up thinking that until the whole system of shooting, swinging, releasing, shooting again, until all that was reliable and consistent, there wasn't that much point having so many shots. So I made the decision that if I just had two shots per arm for a total of four consecutive swings, that would be more than enough to prove that the concept would be feasible. Once I figured that out, I realised I could break the project down into six fairly distinct parts. Firstly, I needed some way of actually launching the web, and I ended up settling on 800 psi compressed air in a tank that I was able to control with these four fancy valves that James gave me. That allowed me to get everything out of the way and mounted on a backpack, and I was able to direct the air through four different hoses to barrels on my wrists. Then, I had to think about the web itself. Now, unfortunately, the way it's depicted in comics and movies, Spider-Man's web is pretty much pure fantasy. So I had to try and figure out the best material to make a real-world approximation, and I ended up finding some high-grade Dyneema. This is pretty amazing stuff. It's got the strongest tensile strength of any commercially available fibre. This cord here, with only 3mm diameter, is rated for a tonne, or about 2,000 pounds. Then, there's the attachment method, because the web needs some way to fasten to its environment. And unfortunately, there's not a glue on the planet strong and quick enough for what I'd need. So I looked at some other ideas like suction cups or magnets, but ultimately I figured a custom grappling hook would be the most promising solution. I also needed some way of attaching myself to the rope, and ideally I'd just grab it, but it's way too thin for that. So I figured some sort of wrist mount would do the trick, and to that I had to add a whole harness system to distribute the weight, because even though I can hold myself with one arm, it's incredibly uncomfortable having all that force pressed directly on your thumb. Once I figured out how I'd be attaching myself to the rope, next I had to figure out how to release from the rope. And I looked at a bunch of mechanisms, but I ended up settling on a snap shackle for one really important reason. Most mechanisms fail open, which means that they can release at really inopportune moments. Whereas a snap shackle fails closed, so if anything goes wrong, instead of falling to my death, I'll just be hanging there like a lemon. And finally there's the electronics and control, which is a bit easier, it's just all the circuitry and logic required to make everything else work. To control the whole system, I'm using some soft circuitry that I sewed into these gloves. By bridging the two contacts, you're completing a circuit which tells the microcontroller to either fire or release the web. By the time I got to the final test you saw, just before I left Canada, mostly everything was working pretty well. The launcher could have used a little more power, but was otherwise working just as I planned. The wrist mounts came out super compact, and together with the harness, they were pretty comfortable. And the circuitry and control worked flawlessly. However, I did run into a couple of issues with the other three sections. The first problem is with the release, and you would have seen this in the Hacksmiths video. Basically, although I used strong servos, they clearly just weren't strong enough to overcome the force that the snap shackles require when they're fully loaded. And the Hacksmith got around this by applying the servo's full range of motion just to one snap shackle. But, I want to have two releases per wrist because that's what's going to give me the four swings that I'm after, so I've got a few ideas in mind. I also had a really weird problem with the rope. Basically, early on in the process, I wanted to figure out a way I could spool it all up in a way that was compact, but would also let it uncoil nicely when you fired it. And initially, it was working every time. It was perfect. Then, when I took it to the final test, it never worked at all. And I still don't really know what changed between those two scenarios. So, I guess I'll have to do some more experimentation. 
I also had a bit of a situational issue with the grappling hooks. In general, they were a big success. They were smaller, lighter, and more compact than a comparable big grappling hook. And as far as looping around objects went, they were just as effective. That is, in a testing situation where you're firing it perfectly perpendicular to the obstacle. I noticed in real life when you fire the hook, it's often not at a 90 degree angle. And what that means is that by the time it wraps around, it's nowhere near the original string, so it can't hook back onto itself. It's not a showstopper, but I'd really like more consistency than what I'm getting with these grappling hooks. So I've spent a lot of time recently coming up with alternative concepts and designs for a grappling hook that's more reliable. Well, there you go. That's been the story so far in trying to build Spider-Man's web shooters in real life. Now, this would normally be the part of the video where I build a bunch of stuff and then do a cool test at the end. But unfortunately, with coronavirus recently, nothing's quite going according to everyone's plan. In fact, South Africa's under lockdown for a few weeks, so I haven't been able to get the materials I've needed for this project. And unfortunately, the next video will probably be a bit delayed as well. If you found this interesting though, please do consider subscribing so you can be alerted when the next video eventually arrives. In the meantime though, the parts I've been waiting for for my other big project, the grappling gun, have finally arrived. And if that doesn't sound familiar to you, check this out. I've recently been building a really cool grappling winch that's smaller and more powerful than any other attempts I've seen. So if you think that sounds cool, you can check out where that all began on the Hacksmith's channel and then come right back here for the continuation on it. And finally, the last video I made was trying to do Star Wars Force Lightning in real life. And you can see that here if you're interested. Thanks for watching everyone, all the best, and I'll see you in the next one.